back to Learning Lockdown. We're coming to you from Liverpool College. I'm Mr S. I'm Mr A. Now it's time for maths, but before we dive into the lesson, let's have a look. How you got on yesterday. Okay, let's take a look at your maths work. First of all, Abby from Rooslip, I think that is. She's joining in and she's done some brilliant maths work. Aidan, looking proud as punch of his maths work there. Amelia, now this isn't her maths work here. We just wanted to show you what she looked like. This is her maths work and she's done excellently. Lorcan has joined us. He's in Hale Village in Liverpool and he's looking very happy with his work there. This is from Lucy. Now Lucy, there's something we've got to say to you. Happy birthday. Hope you have a lovely day, Lucy, and thank you for joining in. Now Ollie and Maisie here in Berkshire, working really hard there on the carpet and this is their work. Well done to both of you. Here's Sasha, who I'm told worked incredibly hard and doesn't he look pleased. Well done to Sasha. Now Sienna, this is a lovely photo. Look at this great little setup. Well done Sienna in Banbury for all your hard work. William in Warrington managed to complete this. Well done William. And finally Julie, we saw some of her work in English. This is what she looks like and here she is holding her maths. Well done and thank you everyone for sending in your stuff. Thank you very much for those pieces of work. Just a reminder, if you can send those pieces of work in as soon as possible, you have more chance of appearing on the video because our little reviewers, those voices in the yeah, sky, whoever they are, they like to receive them as soon as possible. I think possible. they go to bed quite quite early, to be honest. Mm -hmm. so they're very busy people. Anyway, this week, what have we done in maths? Well, we've looked at column addition and we've looked at column subtraction. And now we're going to do one of our favorite things to do on Learn and Lockdown. We're going to amalgamate. Can you remember what those words mean? We're going to join those skills together in a bit of a tricky way, okay? We're going to do something called missing numbers or missing box numbers, or there's a few different ways you can call it. Basically, we're going to give you a calculation with some numbers missing. Let's have a look. So we've got 548 add something is equal to 829. Now, we've already got the answer because we've got the number that's after the equal sign. So we've actually got to work out something else. We've got to work out what was added to 548 to get 829. Now the way we do these missing number problems most of the time, and we'll explain why it's most of the time later, the way we do this is we do something called the inverse, the opposite operation. Now here we're doing an add operation or an addition operation or a sum operation or a more than operation. So the opposite, the inverse of add well, that would be the other skill we can practice, which is subtract where our number gets smaller, where it gets less than. So what we need to do is we need to take one number away from the other, but which one do we need to do this with? Well, this is where we like to use a skill called parts and whole. Now I'm gonna draw this sum on a board using a part whole model. If you're not familiar with this, keep a careful eye out. Now, in an addition problem, we have two parts. We call these two numbers, obviously we don't want to know what this one is, the parts, because we put these parts together and they make a whole. We might even draw it out like this. So we've got the whole, which is the largest number, and it's made up of two smaller parts that have come together. You can imagine this smaller part and this smaller part have come together to make this whole. Well, we know one of them is 548. And it's this one that's missing. Now what this diagram can do is it can help us understand what numbers we need to use in our inverse subtraction problem. You see here, we can see that we added these two numbers together to get our whole. Well, if you look at it this way, if we start with our whole and we take this piece away, then we'd be left with this part. So what we need to do, according to this part whole model, is do 800, and 29, subtract, take away this part of 548, and we should be left with our missing part. We've still used the same numbers, there's the 548, there's the 829, we've just switched the operation to the inverse. Now I don't know how to do it this way, but thankfully I've been practicing my column subtraction. So I'm going to rub this out and rearrange it with column subtraction so we can see how to solve it. So we now have as a column 829 subtract 548 and now we just do what we've been practicing in the last few days. 9 subtract 8 because we start with the ones is 1. 2 lots of 10 subtract 4 lots of 10. Well, 2 lots of 10. I, I, 
can't do it. No, we remember from yesterday that we can't do things like this. We have to go next door and exchange from the next column. So we go to the hundreds now. We've got eight hundreds here, so we can definitely borrow, regroup one of those. So we get rid of the eight hundreds and we lend one away, so we're left with seven. And that one lot of a hundred is regrouped into ten lots of ten. So now we don't have two lots of ten, we've got another ten lots of ten, so altogether that's twelve lots of ten. So now we have 12 lots of 10, subtract 4 lots of 10, and we know that that's 8 lots of 10. And finally, 7 lots of 100, subtract 5 lots of 100, gives us 2, two lots, lots of 100. 100. And now we can write that into our original calculation. Let's put it into our part whole first of all. So we have 829, take away 548, left us with 281. And we can see that these two numbers coming together and we add them together, create 829. Now, we don't always get everything right here at Learning Lockdown. I'm sure you know that for yourselves. What we'd like you to do, you can pause this video and check if we got this right. And the way to do that is simply by adding these two numbers together and seeing, does it equal 829? If it does, you can click play and carry on because we're obviously right. If it doesn't, you can write us an email. Yeah, and tell us. And tell us it didn't work. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's right. Now, so if there's an addition problem with a missing number, we can just do the subtraction, and we always do a subtraction with an addition missing number because remember these are commutative. So 281 add 548 equals 829. It doesn't matter which way round it comes. So as long as one of these two numbers is missing, we can do the inverse. If this number's missing, well, just do the add. Because that's the, that's the calculation oh, sum you've got. Right, let's have a look at a subtraction problem. Now we have something subtract 231 is equal to 426. Mm. Now I've kept my part whole model on the board, so we can try and put this calculation into my part whole model. Now this time in a subtraction, we start with our whole. This was our whole number. These were our parts here, because we've taken away one part, and we're left with another part. So this missing number this time is actually the whole, the larger piece of our diagram. And we've taken away a part, 231, and we've been left with 426. Can you see what we're gonna have to do here then? Think about the inverse. We've got a missing number, we do the inverse. You're right. We're gonna have to add these two parts together. We're gonna do an addition problem because an addition is the inverse of subtraction, to figure out this missing number. So we're going to do 231, and I'm going to set this out in the formal method straight away, at 426. So, now we can do our simple addition. We start with the ones, we've got one plus six, which we know is seven. We've got three lots of 10 plus two lots of 10, which we know is five lots of 10. And finally, we've got two lots of 100 plus four lots of 100, which we know makes it six lots of 100. So, our whole was 657. And remember, if you want to check this, do 657, take away 231, and see if you end up with 426. If you do, the numbers were all correct. Should we do one more example? One more example. Let's do one more. So now we've got 755 subtract something equals 241. So I guess we just use the inverse again to yeah, work it out. that seems fair. What's going on? So we just must use the inverse to solve it out. Why is he not letting us do it? Let me have a look at it. 755, well we said in the subtraction that's our whole. So put it in there, yeah. Yeah, no. The alarm didn't go off, that must be right. Okay. Take away something, or well, take away something. That's okay too. Leads us with the other part of 241. No alarms. Wait a bit. Know that face. Ain't the world's a remarkable place. That's all you're getting for now. For now. Some of you have genuinely been requesting that. But wait a minute, I wouldn't do an add operation with these numbers, 
Because in my part whole model, I don't add these two numbers together to get this part. I add my two parts together to get this number. So I can't do the inverse. What I'm going to have to do is 755 take away this part, 241, to find this other part. I'm still using these two numbers, but I'm taking away still. I'm taking 241 away from 755. That must be because subtraction is not commutative. So, can you remember what that means? If not, go back to yesterday's lesson and find it. I don't know where it came, so you'd be searching for a while. So now we've got 755 subtract 241. So let's go in the ones first of all. Five ones take away one one is four ones. Five lots of 10 subtract four lots of 10 is one lot of 10. And seven lots of 100 subtract two lots of 100 is of course five lots of 100. So now we have this answer. 514 is our missing part. We could test this by doing this calculation to see if we end up with 241. We could even add these two numbers and see if we get a whole of 755. But that's where our warning, that's why our alarm bells were going off. For most missing number calculations, you can do the inverse. But with subtraction, if the second number is missing, you have to carry on and do another subtraction with the numbers you have available. So be careful, on today's task, we haven't even differentiated, there's no year three, four, five, or six, because this, the skills are all there. It's just about, do you have that keen eye? Can you spot when you need to do the inverse or when you don't need to do the inverse? So today you're doing missing number problems, but beware. As always, feel free to send us your work when you're done. We look forward to seeing it. That's Matt.